Hello everyone, welcome to my Afira guide. Thanks to Ubisoft, I have the opportunity to test the new hero Afira and share my experience with you. In this video I will explain basic movesets, openers, defense, um, special moves, max punishes and must to know tricks with her. Uh, at the end I will ex also explain feats, perks, and my overall impression on her hitbox. All right, that's enough. Let's get started. Okay, guys, let's start with the basic moveset. Then I will later explain different things like um, openers, special moves, carry cancels, and so on. But there's so much to explain, I have to do it step by step. Okay. So, first, a basic moveset. That means she has a typical 1-2 chain. You can mix freely between light attacks, light heavy, light light, heavy light, or heavy heavy. So the special thing about her is um, on the chain starters, you have a superior block. And also on the chain, chain finisher. So you, you that means you can do crushing counters on both parts. That's really cool. Also, the heavy attack finishers have different properties, but it depends on which direction you use. So, for example, um, I use the top one, it's for an undodgeable top heavy, or I use the right heavy finisher for an unblockable. And the left one is the wall split move. Basically, if you land that left heavy, ward splits in and it gives you another free heavy. Free top heavy. But the top heavy deals the most damage. 27 damage. Otherwise, it's just 22. Uh, 24, sorry. Okay, guys, now to the openers. What is an opener? Opener is basically a move that force your opponent into a read situation. So like I mentioned, the right heavy finishers are unblockable. This is kind of decent. But, on neutral uh, position, you can perform a bash by going backwards and pressing GB. So what does it mean? You, at this point, you can use a heavy finisher. It guarantees you a heavy finisher, but with reduced damage. For example, you can bash, use unblockable for 18 damage instead of 28. <laughs> or you can go for the undodgeable. Or, best thing is, if you consider your environment, you can go for bash and use the left one for the wall splat. So that's a very strong opener tool. Of course, you can G cancel it into a GB. Yeah, it's up to you how, how you want to use it. Okay, what else do we have as an opener? Uh, like I mentioned, we have here the neutral bash, but there's also another melee attack, and you can perform it after every astro flip. So, after every chain starter and chain finisher, you can perform a flip in all directions. This is a chain starter flip. This is a finisher. And you can flip sidewards, flip backwards, and flip forward. And after every flip, you can perform melee attack. It acts like a neutral bash. So you can kick, side heavy, or splat him, keep on going, and so on. Guys, but there's more. Uh, she has something that's called fleet foot. And that means after every backflip, and if your enemy is out of range, you can perform a chair attack to bash someone. It's a really, really, really strong chase tool. Because you don't even have to go for the backflip. You can also go with the neutral bash. So you see someone, of course, Obviously, you have to be locked onto her towards him, and you can cancel it. Or 
you can perform a side dodge that leads into a red omen. So let's recap. Let's do a recap. Right heavy finisher, neutral bash, and astral flip. And of course, flip dodge. Oh, hopla. <laughs> That's are her main openers. It forced your opponent into a recuperation. Okay, now let's talk about her defense slash counters. I will talk about max punishes later, what move you would usually do in certain situations as optimal punish. But now let's talk in general what kind of moves she has um, to outplay your opponent. She has basically regular parry punishes. She has superior block light attacks, aka crushing counters on chain starters and chain finishers. He has a superior block dodge, aka D flag. He has the side dodge heavy attack and astro flip. <laughs> and that's a lot. Okay. But it's easier to showcase you that. What to do on a parry punish, huh? <laughs> the Fira has very... Uh, not let's say unique, but... More often than other people. Like on the light parry... Without a wall on your right side, you usually go for a top heavy. 27 damage. Or you can obviously put it for bash and then for the top heavy for the extra 16 damage. And this also is guaranteed on heavy attack. But this is only if you have a wall on your uh, on your right side. Otherwise, following the regular parry punishes. Like, out of a. Whoops, up. Out of a light attack. Up one. Every parry. Light attack. Or, you also can go. With bash. So, now getting to the crushing counters. So, the crushing counters are very, very nice. I explain to you why. For example, um, on chain starters and chain finishers, you have superior block lights. It's, it's a nice feature, but also one property that makes it very nice is her uh, forward movement on the superior lights. It's similar to Highlander. You can go backwards and use the crushing counter. So why is that a good tool? <laughs> Highlander no mains will now because uh, you can see a heavy attack flying towards you and you're not 100% sure is he just baiting the crushing counter or not. So that means he's throwing the heavy attack, cancel it, and tries to parry your light attack, but in effect you're going backwards. You are going backwards. That means you're actually whiffing your attack and gives your opponent zero opportunities to parry it, actually. And if he commits the heavy attack, you know what's coming, right? You're still going backward, and because your superior block likes it, you move forward and strike him. That's why this move, in particular, on her is very strong. For example, on Warlord, you whiff, you whiff your crushing counter. But Highlander's main will know. <laughs> so, yo, now it's time to talk about Superior Block Dodge, aka E Flag. Most stylish counter attack according to most of the player base, basically. So what sh what can you do 
on a superior block dodge, aka deflect, you can perform a bash that leads into Red Omen. Very cool tool because it's a bash attack, that means people cannot hyper armor out of your deflect. For example, some heroes like Rochi, Zerka, Handbrake, Hyper Armor out of the Deflect, but not out of them. For example, uh, Nushia, Gladiator, and Shamsul cannot break Hyper Armor for some uh, opponents, for example, Raider. But on this case, it's a, it's a bash. Oh, I shouldn't use the stone attack. Um, you can't break the hyper armor, you get a decent punish, it is 18 damage, and on top of it, it deals decent, decent stamina damage. In this case, it deals 30 damage, and obviously, it's red omen, that means you can potentially walk that your opponent into the wall for this juicy punish. So, but all, now we have to talk also about the dodge attack. And dodge attack is itself nothing special, but it can, counts as a change starter and we know that Ethereum has plenty of options out of a chain starter. That means you can go dodge attack into the light finisher, dodge attack into the heavy finisher, uh, dodge attack into the regular kick for, you know, extra juicy wall splat, for example, for the 18 damage, go for the, um, Max punish without a wall. Also, dodge attack into astral flip into kick, or dodge attack into backward flip into quick foot. That's the options you have in a dodge attack or after a dodge attack. Okay, now you reach the part with the max punishes. Uh, her max punishes are not really straightforward because I mentioned something about different neutral heavy speed. So the right one is 22 damage, the fastest. The left one is 24 damage. It's quite a little bit slower. And the top one, of course, the hardest hitting neutral heavy for 27, but it's also the slowest one. And for your max punish, you always use the right heavy as a starter so basically you can throw him in all direction it doesn't matter if you throw him to the right heavy to heavy throw him to the left heavy to heavy you can do this with all direction all the forward but the most important thing is to not switch in your guard like in the last instance i throw i switch my guard now, I'll throw him forward again. Looks. And also now backwards. All direction works. But very important, use your heavy, uh, your right heavy as a starter. If you switch guard, for example, here, throw him forward. Now I switch to the right. That work. Very important, don't switch your guard. Use the right heavy one okay now to an unbalanced and parry it's basically the same now to unbalanced and parries it's basically the same you can go the right heavy into another heavy But very important, you always have to start with the right one because this is your fastest uh, heavy attack. If you, for example, take the right one, it's not guaranteed anymore. Same with top, of course. Be okay. 
Okay, now let's talk about different ranges. So, usually we talk about three different ranges. Like, short, where all your attacks can connect to the enemy. Medium, with certain type of moves can connect to your enemies. And long range. So out of long range, I'll explain to you Fleetfoot how it works. But now I want to talk about medium range. So not many heroes can act out of hit you out of medium range. Uh, for example, Kense can do, can reach you, the Bushi can reach you, and so on. And Aphiria will basically whip all her neutral attacks out of medium range. But there's one move, very one very powerful move that can still connect because of the great move forward movement. It's the kick. You can basically back your attack. Kick your opponent. So this is worth mentioning. So this is a must know information. Uh, I hope this is helpful. And even if you whiff or if you're, for example, an enemy still connects uh, to you, you can still go for a backflip. Bait it. Okay. If he gets closer to you. Alright, now let's talk real quick about her feats. Her level 1 is a 500 millisecond melee attack that throws your opponent in your 8 o'clock position. And of course, it's a ledge move. But it doesn't guarantee you any follow-ups. Now to the level 2 feat. Uh, it is a passive feat on every successful hit. It doesn't matter if it's a bash, an attack, or something else. Every time when you land an attack, you gain a defense buff for 5 seconds and the defense buff itself is 20%. And now to the last 3 feet. You charge forward with full block stance and you throw your enemy. The throw itself deals 30 damage and it guarantees you a heavy follow up. Basically a red omen for 18 damage or a wall splat for the extra juicy punish. Now to a furious level 4 feat. It's basically a Captain America move. So what it does is you throw your shield and it bounces up to 4 people. It deals 30 damage to all enemies around and you debuff the defense by 20%. And on top of that, it's also a ledge move. But that's actually it. Now we can talk about her perks. Now let's talk about her hitbox. Uh, I played a couple of skirmishes with her and I tried all kinds of moves like unlock lights, heavy attacks, unblockables, zone attacks, dutch attacks and overall I have to say it's reliable but short in range. Um, very often you will whiff your dodge attack and your zone but for example, the unblockable will land many targets or many enemies if you use correctly. But if you just <laughs> swing your weapon widely uh, without any plans, you will with your attacks. So, like I said, overall reliable but short in range. Okay, now let's talk about the perks. Uh, Aphira is on paper a hybrid. In my opinion, she's a hybrid between Vanguard and Assassin because of the perks. And there's only one combination that is actually viable. There are some options you can pick, of course. And that is basically Remedy, Endurance, and Headhunter. You can switch Remedy with Supersonic, but the only these persons will do it. I think Remedy, Endurance and Headhunter is the most useful one. Evora is kind of obsolete because of Remedy. Remedy is all available upon Hero Kill and Devora only on Execute. That's it. Super straightforward. 
Now, we have already reached the end of the video and then I hope you enjoyed it. In this video I have summarized the most important things about the new hero and I shared my experiences with her. Personally, I can't wait to play the new hero but I might make a new video about how she does in matchmaking in general. If you liked this video or learned something useful, please leave a like or subscribe to me. Thanks to you a lot and see you on the next video.